Hello everybody, this is Diane and this is my craft room. It is not completely set up. I need shelves on those wall on that wall right there. But um, I don't know how long it's going to be. I can't have anything more done until the quarantine and restrictions are over. So we are going to do just a little overview of what I have. I'm not going to go into great detail and open all the drawers and everything. But you have been curious about my new crafting space. So we're just going to do a little tour of this room and the next room, which contains some of my storage. So I'm just going to close my door here and step into the room and turn around so we can start by the door. So there's the door. And we'll just we're going to start this way. Um, a lot of the things that you're going to see that are sitting on the floor are supposed to be on the shelves that I don't have. So that right there is my washi tape storage. And that will be on the shelf over my head when I sit at the table. I used to have all of my clear and clean mount stamps in baskets on the shelves over my head at the stamping and painting table but I don't have a stamping and painting table anymore, so I had to come up with a solution for storing all of my many, many, many um, clear stamps and clean stamps. So I have this tower here with a little set of drawers on top, and I think it's going to work out well. I do have to uh, refine the organization and put labels on the, on the drawers, because right now I just stuck them in to make sure I had room and uh, now I need to sort them better and organize them and label them. But on top I have this little turnabout caddy which I got at Hobby Lobby and it holds a lot of my <coughs> excuse me, my stamping tools, my um, brushes, um, there's, a cup, there's a brayer in there. This is nail polish remover to clean off my um, acry acrylic blocks when they get the stays on ink on them. Water brushes are in there, just various things like that. Um, these are the label stamps. I did a video uh, about them recently. These are the larger ones that won't fit in um, this drawer. So this drawer has the rest of those label stamps and other various special stamps that I want to be able to access quickly. This is a vintage one that says copy. Another vintage one that says paid love those. And some word stamps that I like to use a lot. Uh, my This is a little case of tiny little stamps that I don't want to lose. My um, handmade by The Story Begins. Things like that. Um, and here are the borders and corners in the clear and these are all clear borders and corners so I know right where to find them and these are my acrylic blocks and then the other drawers um, the two shallower drawers have the plastic envelopes with stamps in them so I have two of those and then the other drawers the deeper ones have the plastic cases that come from Stampin' Up their cling stamps come in these cases but I also they have you can buy empty ones. So I buy the empty ones and put stamps that I purchased. These are Tim Holtz. So I have three drawers of those. Here, um, I could not put any storage unit there because I have an outlet. You can see I have my battery charger plugged in and it's charging a battery right now for my camera. And in between these two storage units, uh, uh, drawer units, I have my binders full of ephemera. On this one, I have my Stampin' Up um, stamp pad storage, which I love, absolutely love this, and it has all my Stampin' Up pads in it. And then on top, I have my little stays on colored inks. One more stamp pad that I didn't have room for down there. Little distress inks. Um, my stamp cleaner, just a bottle of water for, for spritzing. And I put a piece of wood on top of this because it's, um, divided and this didn't sit very well on it so I just put that wood on it. Behind it I have 
my pad, my large sketch pad that I use for inking on, and my pretty poster board that I use to film, um, to take pictures, and to do flip-throughs. On the floor, you see a tangle of extension cord and cords because I have this lamp here. I don't have my um, fluorescent lights that will be hanging from the ceiling above my table, so I need this. This is temporary. It will not be here uh, once I get my lights up, but I do have to move this down to the other end um, when I'm sewing, so it's on a long extension cord. And I have my um, heat embosser, my heat gun down there too, so I can just, it's all plugged in. I can just grab it and use it when I need it. I don't use it a lot, but it's there when I need it. I don't have to fuss. I have another drawer unit here, and this used to be under my table, right, right there where that blue one is. But I will show you what's in the blue one. Um, but this is still close enough for what I need, and I just have um, the same things in it I used to have in other videos I've shown it. So there's tags and um, cards, bags, envelopes, things like that. I'll do the top of the table and then we'll go underneath. Um, down at this end I have my punching tools and my tape gun. The punching tools will end up on the shelf when I get it. And uh, down there is just bunches of little things. And this is just a container that has pens and pencils that I use a lot and different types of paper clips and safety pins and things like that. I have my reinforcements. Paint brushes are stuck in there just because I don't know where they're going to end up yet. And a couple more brayers, um, some paper punches, and some a variety of paper clips. Uh, this divided caddy here has rulers, scissors, um, sharp tools, and what do you call these? Bone folders, scorer, scorers, and things like that. Um, and then I have my glues right here, so I can grab them, and my two corner rounders, my tape. Um, this little container has coffee dyed index cards and things that I can easily grab, and then that container has um, guest checks and the Tim Holtz word stickers and a few um, pay, um, what do you call them, time cards. I have more of them in, in the other room, but I keep a few in here so they're handy. And moving on down the table, I have my paper towels, my little fan if I need it, and then this is my sewing, the sewing side of my table. So of course my sewing machine, and sometimes I get questions about what it's sitting on because I slide it around so easily. It is a pad. It's doubled over. Oh, there's my Y. Um, it was made for uh, to put under a coffee pot because I guess you know coffee pots leak sometimes and so I had bought one for my husband's coffee pot and I liked it so well that I bought one for this for sliding it back and forth and um, I don't have a coffee pot anymore my husband is no longer with me and um, I don't drink coffee so I used the other one that was for the coffee pot I put it under my KitchenAid mixer on my counter because I have to slide that back and forth so they work really great and I found them at Walmart in the aisle where the coffee pots are they were hanging on one of the clip strips just in case you want to know but I've had them for years so I don't know if you'd still find them <clears throat> so here on the table I have various baskets and containers of fabrics and laces mostly smaller pieces down there I just have muslins and um, solids, you know, pretty neutral things that I can grab when I need it, but the other pieces, the other things are smaller pieces of laces and fabrics, and they're handy for me to grab when I need to make fabric flips or just little pieces of fabric. Other baskets of fabric and laces are going to be on the shelves here, but for now they're sitting on the floor. So now I'm going to go back across and talk about a little bit about um, what's underneath the table but first this is where I do my the bulk of my work I have this mat here um, my 
that mat is underneath the cutting mat if I need it. These are the um, fabric covers that I made that I want to put in my shop, but I haven't put them in the shop yet because I want to work to finish making some clusters and fabric flips that I can put in the shop at the same time. They're not going to be sold with these, but I, I want to list everything at the same time. Um, I didn't mention these two containers here. This is a galvanized divided container that I got at Hobby Lobby when they have their, they often have stuff like this half price. And when I'm working on a journal project, I might put my book covers in there, um, pages that I might want to use, pages and papers. Back here I have chipboard and um, Tyvek, things like that in the back, and maybe some neutral card stocks that I can use to back things for journal cards. And this is where I put cutoffs when I'm making a journal. Um, if I when I cut off pieces, I'll put them in here, and I can use them for embellishments. And then to the other side of my work mat, I have this set of three drawers. There's uh, another light there that's supposed to be on my piano, but I really needed the extra light in here while I'm working. But when I'm working on a project, I'll put embellishment pieces in these little drawers. I put small, medium, and large pieces in there. Or if I'm working with a journal kit, I'll have embellishments from the kit in here, handmade embellishments here, and whatever, however I want to um, organize it. And then I have my tablet there. Usually it's sitting up here, and I might have um, YouTube videos on while I'm crafting. Sometimes I watch YouTube, sometimes I have music on that I can listen to. Now we're going underneath. So I have these, I have a lot of drawer units underneath my table. This one has 12 by 12 containers. They did have lids, but I took the lids off so I can access them easily. So there are five, is it five? One, two, yeah. Five drawers of 12 by 12 papers, and uh, the top drawer is lined um, ledger and scraps of the same. So I can open this up when I need to um, put a journaling spot somewhere or put it on the back of a journaling card or something. That's why this really needs to go because I can't open these drawers without moving the light out of my way. And in here, um, I have my inking thing. So the dress, the stress inks and stays on is there. Um, embossing powders. I thought that lid was off. <laughs> um, distress oxides. The tools and the, the cleaner. And then down here I need to make uh, good use of this space. But it's a deep drawer and right now it has my alcohol, my alcohol inks. And just a few other little things in there. But... Um, it has room for more. And then down here, right by my feet, I have this box that has these little boxes inside, and these boxes contain ephemera pieces. All of my Tim Holtz people are in here. They're divided. There's ladies, kids. There's two of kids and men. And other ephemera pieces that I access a lot for embellishments and collages. And then down here I have more 12 by 12 and the, the lids are still on those. I don't get in those a whole lot but when I do it's because I want to use uh, a kit. Just take, take a, not a kit, um, a paper set, what do you call them? Paper pad um, and use it because these are Tim Holtz, um, Stamperia, Graphic 45, Stampin' Up, things like that. So when I want, I don't want just a few pieces of paper from these. I want to take it and make a journal using that paper line. I hope that makes sense. Um, my wastebasket sits right here. And down here are these plastic bags that bedding came in. And they have my coffee dyed papers, coffee dyed, avocado dyed that I purchased, um, things like that. So that's the full sheets and there's another bag with scraps and another bag that has coffee dyed envelopes and things like that. 
the Mary Kay box down here. Um, that's just a box that contains my eyelets and all the little tools that I use to set eyelets. And there's a box down there that says fresh tomatoes, and I have to get in there and I because I can't remember what's in it. Um, it's the last holdout. <laughs> This room was so full of so many boxes that I was constantly having to go through looking for things. But that's the last one. And I know it's got paper in it, but I have to get into it and see exactly what papers. And you'll see some containers down there that have laces. Um, there's little embroidery pieces in some of them. So those are things that are going to go on the shelves when I have them. A little piece of wood there is, in case you're curious, I... I put it there so I can put my heel on it while I'm sewing and it relieves um, tension on my shin. I get sore shins when I'm sewing a lot. <clears throat> There's a wicker basket back there which has quilt batting and large pieces of muslin and, and uh, stuff like that. I don't need to access it very often so it's tucked way back in there. And on top is another little basket that has smaller pieces of quilt batting so I can just grab that and take when I'm making pat things that have quilt batting and then when I run out I can get into the big one and put some more in there so I'm gonna move down here these are just sewing supplies here um, threads and bobbins more thread rick rack these are all my sewing tools um, and then down here is laces well, actually, that's my sewing machine book. But there's big wide lace and more wide lace down there. Okay. I hope I'm doing this okay. So far, it seems to be going better than the first time I tried to do this last week. All right, so we have this funky tower here. Um, this is just a box that has fabric pieces and they're they stand up they're filed like that so I can get a good look at what I have and then this has crocheted pieces sorry okay there we go crocheted pieces and doilies mostly vintage there's tatting in there and either these are small doily pieces um, this one has uh, the ruffled trims and rosette trims. Those spools are too tall to stand up like I do in here. That way I can see all the, the designs that I have. There's a lot of room in here. This used to be crammed tight full, but I haven't been to Hobby Lobby in months. I haven't been to any of my craft stores since November, and this is the middle of April. I really want to go to my craft stores. Not that I need anything, I just like going. Um, this drawer has my gimp and just various things like really wide rickrack. It has miscellaneous, like I have some vintage belts in here that I could use to make fun things. Did you see the cowboy journal I made with the belt? So that got me excited to use some of those things. This one has more, has eyelet, different kinds of eyelet, plus a really big rosette spool and wide, more, more wide lace. Then we have, a lot of these are vintage and I found these at flea markets. And I just take them and wrap them on card. Some of them are vintage pieces of card stock that had seam binding and stuff on them. Um, so I wrap them. Ow! Oh, just stuck a pin right up my fingernail. Um, <laughs> anyway, you got to be careful in here because they're secured with pins. So there's lots of, lots of lace in there. And I have another drawer. And I've been using it. I use it a lot. And then down here I have um, pom-poms. And a lot of it is vintage pom-poms, which is really cool. Here's some more baskets over here with fabric and lace and ribbon and buttons and all of those things will go on the shelf. There's a couple sitting on my windowsill there. Uh, Yo-yos and there's some wooden spools and really fun, cool things that need that need their shelf. 
we have another tower over here on top of this is this little orange box that has adhesives and plus this I just got from Amazon with my three-in-one yep I'm bleeding where the pin went in my fingernail um, this is a vintage postal stamp thingy so these are all old postal stamps from the post office it wasn't full when I got it but I love it I found that at the flea market this unit needs to be organized it has some drawers that aren't being used the way I want them to I just stuck things in them for now but this is going to be um, organized when I have a chance so that's just envelopes up there this is scrap card stock I said I wasn't going to open all the drawers um, but there's stamps in some of the drawers and some of them just need to be this doesn't need to be in here but I need to find something to go in there so and I'm sure I will I still have things that need homes um, like some of these things could probably go in some of these drawers until I get the shelf at least I'd get some off the floor but um, most of the drawers down at the bottom are wooden stamps and they are organized according to category but because I have less room for those units I uh, and I got rid of a lot of stamps I combined so there's like two or three categories in each drawer on the door of my closet I have a shoe holder which has my punches and all the flowers that I have are right there I think that's all of them I don't use a lot of flowers oh one of these drawers has my stencils there's all my stencils in there and this stencil didn't fit because it's a 12 by 12 so that's hanging there um, inside I don't know if you'll be able to see in here very well I have this little light I only have one but I have two rooms with closets that I need these in so on top uh, Christmas stamps are back there there's my special doll that Elvira made for me and there's a teddy bear that I made out of a vintage patchwork quilt that was falling apart I made that years ago so they're there until I have places to put them and all my beading stuff is here and I have to see what's in that because I don't know what's in there right now but my bind it all and the bind it all tools and file folders and collage stuff is up here these drawers have collage materials and so does this and let's turn this around this way more drawers and these drawers have book pages there's more collage stuff up here so these are just various book pages and I have them categorized this is math and engineering and technical stuff like that uh, crafts or arts or something so different types and I have to label them I haven't labeled anything new um, because I want to make sure everything is set the way I want it I can change labels but I'll probably have to start labeling uh, my camera tripod is back there and my oops there goes the light I was picking it up so I could actually shine it where I need it sorry about that um, oh <laughs> let's get myself organized here okay so down there are my glue books for now and that little box isn't going to stay there but it's full of the handmade ephemera that I've been making I don't know where to put it right now and over here we have this box has tall papers big papers and big books children's books pretty much um, that I, I need large pages when I need large pages there's vintage sequins and things like that um, my label maker is there the blue box has my empty slide mounts there's a sewing machine down there that I need to get adjusted and uh, more pa more book pages my chipboard is in the top drawer I use the chipboard to make spines 
put this light back up there. And then more book pages. I have two drawers full of children's book pages and then other categories down there. Those plastic things are the lids to those 12 by 12 drawers. I took the lids off. And that tote down there has punches that are like the Martha Stewart punches that make um, doilies and some other larger like edge punches. I guess border all my border punches are in there because I don't have a place to put them at this point. And then in the middle, this closet is deep enough that I can open these drawers while I still have this in the middle, which I love. I couldn't do that with my other closet at my other house. Sitting on top are these little mesh bags with zippers, and they all have vintage things. So there's vintage letters and um, vintage note cards and greeting cards and um, just various vintage pieces. And there's a lot of vintage in these drawers, but a lot of other things too. This has my wax potpourri and the instructions for my um, print, label, label makers. This is the little post-it note type of things. I like to use them for journaling spots. And then I have drawers that... This one says homemade ephemera, but that's not what's in it. It is junk mail envelopes. Um, this one says to make ephemera. So this is the drawer I was using when I pulled stuff out of it and was making ephemera in a recent video. Foreign language, bridge, vintage receipts, and vintage bingo cards. So that's a really fun unit right there. And then here I have two carts on wheels. This one gets moved around quite a bit. I usually put it next to my chair, kind of behind my chair where I'm working, and I'll have my paper cutter on it or my glue stick and a, and a paper that I can use for gluing. So I keep extra paper and stuff in there for when I, for when I need to glue. And there's a paper cutter and a scoreboard and my corrugator. Oh, the corrugator's down below. My envelope scoreboard, they're all in here. And then large punches that I love to use a lot. And my paper corrugator are in there. And this one, all of these things were on the shelves over my head. And this cart was used to store mixed media supplies. But I have slowly been figuring out how to organize it with all of these little containers that used to be on my shelves. So I found containers that kind of fit in. It was like playing with a puzzle. So I have all kinds of stuff. I have journaling cards, tags. Um, this little container here has various tabs. And there's tags, more tags of different sizes all kinds of stuff. Recipe cards. There's a nice container there of recipe cards. Um, and my little, the little glassine sacks and the ones that I make with my dye. And down below are the fibers and back there is seam binding. So everything is real handy. It does work. Um, I could leave it this way. But I might want to put my mixed media stuff back in it, but I don't know where I would. I don't know. I, it's kind of kind of crowded to have them both there, but it works for now. And we're almost done in this room. Over here, these are some of the shelves that are supposed to be hanging on my wall. And there's another set that went home with somebody else um, when they helped me move. He was told that I didn't want them. So he took the set with him, but when he found out I did want them, he said he'd bring them back, but now we're all quarantined. So I am waiting to get the other set of shelves and then my son-in-law will hang them for me. Um, so I have another drawer unit here with mostly, um, I guess it's all wooden stamps and I need to label those. Here is my little box. It has all my supplies for binding journals so I can just grab it and go because I usually do that out in the living room while I'm watching TV. And then this little container has envelopes, various like 
coin envelopes and special ones like that. I have a couple extra paper cutters and my cutting board here for cutting fabric. Back That's when I used to sew clothing and things, but I don't do that anymore, but I kept that board. Now we're going to leave this room and go next door. Well, we'll stop here in the little space here between the rooms. Oh, it's cooler out here. So I have a bookshelf here, which I'm hoping will eventually have more books, like that shelf there. It just has books on it that have nothing to do with junk journals. But I need it to store some junk journal supplies right now. So on top are my O-rings in, in the white boxes. Those are my O-rings for my Bind It All. The brown box has personal ephemera things that need to go in smash books and things like that. And those magazine holders have art journal magazines. The wooden sewing box contains playing cards, game cards, postcards, things like that. I used to have two, I think at one point I had three, long containers that had those kinds of cards in them. And now I have one. I got rid of a lot. These are my library catalog card blanks. So they're perforated. I can take them apart and use them. I have a lot. What's this? Oh, these are little uh, vintage notebooks and appointment books and things like that. And these are the same thing, but slightly larger. These are just my, my books. And we have vintage things in these drawers. Um, vintage tickets, my Denison stickers, and tea, tea cards, cigarette cards. Um, sewing ephemera in here, like these labels needles and stuff like that. Viewmaster cards and other miscellaneous vintage cards. This is miscellaneous vintage. That one needs stuff in it. And these are mailing labels. Um, these are some books that I can use pages out of. And this basket contains book covers that I want to turn into journals. Um, as I said, those are just my books. And down here are more books that I can use pages from. Two more baskets of book covers. This one has a lot of Reader's Digest and really, really nice vintage book covers. And this one has children's books, including a lot of golden books. I have to move this basket out of the way. Those boxes just um, contain ephemera. Like one of them is the domestic arts journal I'm making for myself that I haven't worked on in probably over a year but it's got all the it's got my book in it and lots of pieces that I want to put in it and I think this one has domestic art stuff in it too but for journals that I'm going to sell um, more book covers some of them are full books that haven't been taken apart and those zippered envelopes and pouches. They have vintage magazine images and things like that. Um, this packet has calendars that I like to use for book pages. And you can see my shadow. That basket that I'm moving around is one of the milk crates that has my um, collections that I'm saving up to make journals with. So this one is sewing, um, bunnies, teddy bears, things like that. Now I had two of these milk crates and I did a video showing about how I make these, how I collect my things. But I'm down to one because I had, this was just full of stuff and I had to clear it out. So I'm down to one. I still need to get rid of that, but it's, it's going to take a little while before I have room for them. And then here I have this skinny tower that used to be in my guest room. It fit perfectly between the bed and the wall. But I don't have a guest room anymore. So it fits here nicely. Plus I can put these little drawers on top of it. In the bottom, it's really nice for folders. These are all digital kits that I've printed and haven't used or um, leftovers from digital kits that I have used. That one needs to have something in it. This one has elastic 
for guiding journals and the hair ties and stuff like that. This one needs something in it too, I think. It's just miscellaneous. Um, it's just a vintage Rolodex. I don't know where to put it. Napkins are in here. Brads. Labels. Larger labels. I do have a binder of smaller labels. Um, Flashcards. This one is... That one just needs stuff in it. And green stamps. Slides. It says vintage labels. Oh, it's got more slides. Oh, it's got the seed packet. The French... Vintage French seed labels, and I have a couple packets of those in there. Milk caps are in there, vintage ones. Um, vintage cards and miscellaneous 3D items are in there. So that takes care of this. I crammed a lot into this little area. So now we're going to go into this room. I call this room my office. I intended to have my desk in here, but and I have my printer, so that's why I called it the office, desk and printer. But instead of a desk, it has my piano. It's the only place I could find to put my piano. So the desk is in my bedroom, unfortunately, but it works. So we're going to start here at the door. This one, this area is shipping supply. So I've got envelopes down there. Um, I've got bubble wrap back there. I'm tripping over stuff over here. Um, so it's just all shipping supplies here. I've got my business cards and tape and scissors and all the things I need for mailing packages. Oh, this is supposed to have... I don't know what's supposed to be in there. I guess I need to put something in there. So there's um, my package tape, my little bags when I pack up little cards and things like that. Tissue paper. Um bags and large envelopes, padded envelopes and things like that. We'll come back to this closet. There's my printer and all my papers and things. This box contains recipe books, vintage recipe books and things like that that I can use to make cookbooks. And there's my older computer there that didn't work. I got it fixed. It's still really, really slow, but at least it works. Um, in that basket there, I have smash books and the bind it all books that I've actually used. And then I have three boxes here of journals that are used. Some of them are the ones I've made, some are ones I purchased from others or were gifted to me or I received in swaps, but they are all handmade journals and they're all used. So I'm thinking. Now I have to look for some bookshelves that can go on that wall that I can store my journals on. Um, here I have my desk that I found at a yard sale a couple summers ago. And it's my cutting station. So I have my Sizzix, um, this thing, Big Shot. Is that what it is? Yeah. And my Cricut. And... Also, I have my scale right there for weighing packages. I just move it up here when I need to weigh packages. There's a journal that I made that is for a swap. And the drawers just contain all the things I need for the cutting. So this has all of my... the, the decks that you put through here. And this one has the tools. This one has the dies. And these are the big, thick dies. I've got oversized paper back here, and my glass mat is back here. That used to be on my stamping and painting table, which I no longer have. So, but I have it there for when I do want to do things like that. And underneath are, well. My Cricut quit working, and I ended up buying one, but you couldn't buy the kind that I like, the kind I'm used to. All you could buy were the ones that are kind of um, internet. You have to have the internet to use them. And I could never figure out how to use it. But I am going to learn. But in the meantime, I bought this used one. It's a small size, but I could use it. And then when I moved, I tested 
this one again before I got rid of it because I had hung on to it and it worked. So I don't know, but it works. So now I have a lot of crickets. And this one has embossing folders. It's a binder that has embossing folders. And my Cricut cartridges are in those boxes. And then we have this, these two units. The horizontal one is just paper storage. So it has all my papers divided. Well, not all, but you know. Mar uh, vellum is in here, um, acetate mulberry paper, and then the various 8.5 by 11 colors of cardstock. I got rid of a lot of that when I moved so I could condense them um, into, I had, you know, I had them all divided, greens, blues, yellows, oranges, but now they're kind of more condensed and I have less of it because I had to put some of these papers that were in a different place here because I, I just, I don't have the same kind of space that I used to have. So all my Italian paper from Rachel is right there. And I have um, tracing paper and typing paper here. Um, ledger, grid, lined paper, miscellaneous types of paper, craft paper. My, um, oops, sorry, time cards. White with some pieces of cork there. So it's all divided so I know where to find things. Up here, um, this container has chenille, and this container has more uh, linens and crochet and stuff. And that just has lots of metal pieces. And it's a little hard having it up there. I have to take it down off of there so I can get into the drawers, but at least it's there where I can get to it. This other unit just has piano music because it's sitting right next to my piano. This unit has vintage magazines, at, um, Tyvek, and grunge board. Small paper pads, and there are doilies underneath them. Vintage ledgers, large ones. Vintage wrapping paper. Vintage stationery. And uh, more ledgers. It has the little ones plus the extra big ones that I have to lay sideways. And the bottom drawer has vintage music and um, the index card divider thingies and small ledgers and just small papers. And there's a table here in the middle of the room. It's a folding table so I can take it down if I need to, but I set it up so that I could wrap and ship packages from here. So it's nice that I have, before I was taking everything out to my dining room table, but I've got my printer for printing the labels. I've got all my supplies right there. And I have a table here for packing. And right there I have two journals in boxes. They're not listed in my shop yet. Um, they're the elephant journals and they'll be listed in a couple of days, but they're there. I pack them. I have to package them so I can weigh them and know how much they weigh with all the packing materials. So that's it. Um, I am really enjoying my space now that I've got things a little more settled. I am still looking forward to getting my shelves and my lights um, so I can really have it the way I want it. But it is very, very workable at this point, And I know that I am blessed to have this dedicated space for crafting. I hope you enjoyed taking the tour with me and I will see you again. Hopefully um, when you see me crafting again, you will be able to envision the space that I'm using. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.